Hello there and welcome! In this video I'm going to show you everything you need to know about pets, such as what pets are the best, how to build them, how to equip them. Pets are extremely powerful in Wrath of the Righteous. They don't take a party slot, have high damage, a good number of attacks per round, high armor class and can even have very useful crowd control on every single hit. You can actually have a pet tank for you even on unfair. The difference being tanking pets don't require multiclassing, heavy fit investment or anything like that at all. What this means is they have powerful armor class with minimal investment. Basically, pets can do almost everything besides casting spells. Alright, so the first choice you'll have to make and the most important is what pet you actually get for your character. I'll be blunt, the best pets overall are the dog and also the wolf. Later I will also talk about horses because I know many pet classes only have access to them. However, it is important to note that the best pet early game is the leopard by far, especially for hard and unfair. That's because early on the leopard has by far the best stats and it also evolves the earliest at level 4. For example, the Leopard can have around 30 armor class just at level 2, which is a massive amount for early game, even on unfair. While its damage is low, its attack bonus is rather decent, way above the other pets at the same level, and it also starts with 3 attacks per round. One of them, the Bite, even has a built-in trip effect. Now, the Leopard will get outclassed by Dog and Wolf around level 7, because that is when they evolve, gaining a big boost to strength and damage. So you can always respect it later on to trade the leopard for a dog or wolf if you so desire. Now, the reason dogs and wolves are so powerful is because every single one of their attacks, which are all bites, have built-in trip. Basically, whenever your dog attacks, it also automatically attempts to trip the enemy for free. A tripped enemy is knocked down, meaning they lose their action for the round, take a massive minus 4 penalty to armor class against melee, and also generate an attack of opportunity when they try to get up. Overall, this is one of the best crowd control effects in the game, and it can work on most enemies, even on unfair. Often only the endgame bosses tend to resist it. However, like you can see from this picture, it is very much possible to increase your pets bonus to the point where they can hit pretty much almost everything with the knockdown effect. It is true that certain enemies like some winged demons are often immune, but even then having trip as an extra effect added to all your attacks is absolutely insane. You might be wondering why the infamous Smilodon, who starts with 5 attacks per round, is not the best pet, and well, at early levels the Smilodon has extremely low attack bonus. Also, while the dog and wolf only have a single attack per round at the beginning, they actually gain more as they level. Just like your own characters, they will gain another attack per round, in this case another bite, for every 6 base attack bonus they have, capping out at a max of 3 or 4 when hasted. Once again, every single one of these attacks will have a free trip besides the damage even more when you consider their attacks of opportunity are also a bite for even more trips. Now let's talk about how you should be building your tripping pets, such as the dog and wolf. This also works for other tripping pets like the lizard for example and even the leopard. For a class archetype you definitely want to go with bully. Bully gives you free trip at level 1 and you might wonder why bother when the pets already automatically trip with their attacks. The reason is that the trip feat actually adds plus 2 to the difficulty class of all your trips attempts, including pet trips. Also, having trip as a feat gives you access to other powerful feats that cannot be achieved in any other way. And pets cannot get tripped by default, besides from a trickster character, as there is no way of getting them to achieving the required 13 intelligence for normal trip. So let's pick Bully for our pet. Now when it comes to skills, I suggest you absolutely get 1 point in Perception, as Perception is always useful, 
and your pets will help you spot traps and other secrets. As for the other skill point, it's a choice between either athletics or mobility, depending on what you want, really. In this case, I'm going to pick athletics, because the dog has very high strength. Now, the first feat you should get for a bully pet is without a doubt, Furious Fall. This feat will let you add your dexterity bonus to your CMB when making a trip attack. So basically, it's going to increase our trip difficulty class. And the higher it is, the higher the chances of working on the enemy and knocking them down. So let's pick Furious Fall. Level 2 just means more skills, so let us keep increasing both athletics and also perception. Alright, so for level 3 we actually get another feat, and in this case I highly recommend you pick the feat called Combat Reflexes. This feat is simply amazing when it comes to attacks of opportunity, and our pets will get the required teamwork feats to make them work. Now level 4 is also very important, for the sole reason that this is when we get another at ability point to increase. You should without a doubt pick intelligence. As you might have already noticed from a loading screen tip, a pet that has 3 intelligence will be able to qualify for teamwork feats and we definitely want those, so be sure to increase your intelligence to 3 at level 4. At level 5, I would recommend you get the feat Shake It Off. This teamwork feat is very useful and will help increase our pet saving throws. Pets do have high fortitude and reflex, but tend to have very low will. And will is basically the save that is targeted by most annoying crowd control effects used by the enemy. Now for level 7 there is really only one feat that we should pick, and it's without a doubt Outflank. Outflank is an amazing feat, I have already talked about this before, this feat is a must have on every single one of your melee characters, including pets. So let's pick it. Now as far as your other increases in ability points, from level 8 onwards, you should definitely pick strength. The higher our strength, the better our attack bonus, damage, and also trip. Your level 9 choice feat is also very easy, in this case, seize the moment. This feat has amazing synergy with both combat reflexes and outflank, and will increase the amount of attacks of opportunity we can make, not only for our pets, but also our party, so be sure to pick it at level 9. Your level 11 feat pick is also a given, in this case Improved Critical Bite. Pets have pretty low critical range by default, pets with bite for example have only, only get a critical by rolling a 20, but with Improved Critical we can increase that to 19-20, so basically doubling our critical range. Let's get another strength increase at level 12. Alright, so by level 13 we already picked the best feats we could get for our pets, so the choices now become a bit more personal. If you have more than one pet with access to trip, I highly recommend you get the Tandem Trip feat. This teamwork feat will let your pets re-roll all their trip attempts and pick the better result. Because it is a teamwork feat, it won't really work unless you have another pet or a party member who has access to the feat as well. As I like to run with more than one pet, I often pick this feat, so let's get it at level 13. Now, for your level 15 feat choice, I recommend getting Weapon Focus Bite. This might not seem like much, but a plus one to attack rolls is actually rather decent, especially since all our attacks are bites. Now, for level 17 and 19, you have a few different choices. 
You can, for example, pick Blind Fight. This feat will help your pet hit enemies that have concealment, and since at the moment so the concealment of some enemies is actually not bypassed by the true seeing buff, having Blind Fight will help you increase your chance of hitting those annoying enemies. You can also get the Toughness feat to increase your pet's hit points. Now a plus 20 to hit points might not seem like much, but as I like to have my pets tank, and pets cannot get access to the last 10 mythic feet, the higher their hit points, the better for us. So let's choose toughness for example. Now your level 19 feet peak can also go a number of different ways, but in this case, I would choose either blind fight or improved initiative. But like I said before, we have already picked the most important feats up to around level 13, so everything past that is more of a personal choice. Alright, because I know many classes have access to horses only, including some very popular classes, I'm also going to show you how I like to build horses. This build will also work for other generic non-tripping pets, like let's say this Milodon for example. For horses and other generic pets, I'd rather like the default animal companion class, meaning no archetype. You can indeed go with something like Bulwark instead, but in reality pet body armor is not really needed at all. We can easily make up for the loss of pet armor AC with buffs. Also, Bulwark does not get the multi-attack ability, and it also does not get both evasion and improved evasion. Two abilities that are extremely useful as they will allow us, our pets, to evade most damage from area of effect spells and abilities, as pets tend to have very high reflex. This is the same for the aggressor archetype. At first point it does appear to be good, but once again, it also denies you of both evasion and improved evasion, and in this case also devotion. Ok, so as I said before, let us go with our default animal companion class. As usual, you should go with Perception and either Athletics or Mobility. Because my dog already has Athletics, in the case of the horse, I'll be going with Mobility. Alright, so for a first generic or horse feet pick, I strongly recommend you go with Combat Reflexes. This feat is great for reasons that I already said before, and it will help us get quite a lot of attacks of opportunity. It's important to note that if you are playing with a pet that has very high dexterity, like the Leopard, or for example the Centipede, you really should be picking the Weapon Finesse feat at level 1. But once again, this is only for pets that have very high dexterity. In the case of our horse, let us go with Combat Reflexes. Let us keep increasing mobility and perception for level 2. Ok, so at level 3 we get to pick a feat for our pet. In this case, I like going with weapon focus, based on whatever weapon attacks your pet has. In the case of the horse, it has both a bite and two hoof attacks. Because bite is the type of attack that is actually applied whenever your pet gets an attack of opportunity or also an increase in attacks from for example haste, I strongly suggest you go with whatever primary attack your pet has. So let us pick Bite for our horse. Now just like I said before, for the dog and wolf, at level 4 it's highly important that you choose to increase intelligence, so that our horse or other pet can get access to teamwork feats. Alright, so from level 5 onwards, our feat choices will be mostly similar to the same feats we picked for our dog and wolf. That's because now we have access to the very powerful teamwork feats. The first teamwork feat I recommend you get is just like before, shake it off. Level 7 means yet another teamwork feat, in this case, without a doubt, outflank. Now from level 8 onwards, you can choose to increase either strength or dexterity depending on the type of pet you have. Horses have higher strength, so we'll keep increasing the horse's strength. Ok, so now our feat choice at level 9 should be seize the moment as always. This will complete our teamwork feats, 
that work based on attack of opportunities. Level 11, just like it was for our dog and wolf, should be improved critical and then your primary pet attack. In the case of the horse, a bite. Now level 13 onwards will also be similar to the dog and wolf. And like I said before, this is when feats get a bit more personal, because we already have access to the best ones. For the non-tripping pets, I like picking toughness, because just like before, pets do not have access to the last 10 mythic ability, so the more hit points they have, the better for us, and also because they will be tanking. For level 15, I enjoy picking Improved Initiative. Like always, acting before the enemy is always very useful. By level 17, we don't really have many useful feats to actually pick. Something nice that you can do is pick Dazzling Display here and later Shatter Defenses. This will highly increase our pet's attack bonus against enemies that are shaken. It's not really needed, however, because at this point in the game, we already have quite powerful attack bonus. You can, however, choose to pick these feats starting from level 13 onwards. So let us go with Dazzling Display. You can also choose to replace one of these feats past level 12 with Blind Fight. In this case, I'm going with Dazzling Display. Now, because we picked Dazzling Display before, the final choice should be easy. Without a doubt, we want Shatter Defenses. Last but not least, at level 20, we'll definitely want to get our last increase in Strength. And that was it for our horse and other generic non-tripping pets. Alright, so let us talk now about how to properly buff your pet so that they can stand against the tougher enemies in the game and still survive. I've noticed a lot of people saying that pets are bad or that they don't scale well into the endgame, and that's actually a lie. The most common reason is that they don't know how to properly buff their pets. Just like your characters, an unbuffed pet is not going to have much success. For this video, I'm going to be using Sociel's level 20 dog as an example. Now, the first and most useful buff you have for your pets is without a doubt Mage Armor. Mage Armor not only lasts very long at 1 hour of real time per level, but it's also going to buff our pets with a massive plus 4 bonus to armor class. Early game this is quite huge, but later on we can actually increase the value by using braces of armor, that can go for up to plus 8 instead of just plus 4. Another very useful buff to have early game is Shield of Faith, eventually this can grant your pet up to plus 5 deflection to armor class. And because pets cannot equip rings, this is always going to be a very useful buff. We also have Bark Skin, another common early buff. That's yet another plus 5 to armor class. Now another very powerful defensive buff that a lot of people don't know about is Magical Vestment Armor, a divine buff that will increase your pet's armor class up to plus 5. Even though pets don't really wear any armor, this buff will actually work on them. For those who are curious, it also works on robes equipped by, for example, your mage characters. Now we have a special buff that's also very useful to the whole game and can be achieved quite early. In this case, shield. The special thing about shield is that, by default, it is a personal only buff, however, My by having a vivisectionist or any alchemist really, with the infusion discovery, 
we will be able to cast Shield as an Alchemist spell on all our characters, including pets. Because Shield is able to give a plus 4 to armor class, it's very powerful and very useful. Not only for pets, but also dual wielders and two handers. And speaking about Alchemist, another very useful buff they can cast on pets is Animal Aspect Gorilla, but in this case for tripping pets. As you can see from the spell description, this spell will grant a plus 4 competence bonus whenever our pet attempts to trip the enemy. So to put it simply, it's going to highly increase the chances that the enemy will be knocked down. Once again, only alchemists can really cast this buff on pets, because by default it is a personal buff. Brown 4 arcanists can also get it on other characters. Another very useful defensive buff for pets is the spell Blur. This spell will give 20% concealment. And because our pets will be often tanking and at the front of our party, they will be taking a lot of hits from the enemy. With Blur, however, 24% of these hits will automatically miss, even if they pass our pet's armor class. Now starting from level 9, characters like Wizards, Sorcerers, Druids and Camellia as a Spirit Hunter will be able to cast one of the most powerful pet buffs in the whole game, if not the most powerful, the spell called Animal Growth. This spell has incredibly powerful effects. It will not only give your pet a plus 8 size bonus to strength, and plus 4 size bonus to constitution, it's also going to increase their natural armor class and even increase their damage because it is a size increase. Once again, because the bonus is size, this will also stack with the animal buffs such as bow strengths for example. So let us cast it. If there's a single pet buff in the game that I would say is a must, it's animal growth, without a doubt. Now, of course, we also have the animal buffs such as All's Wisdom, Bear's Endurance, Eagle's Splendor. But you can replace some of these buffs with access to belts, as pets can equip belts. In most cases, you probably have your pet equipped with physical enhancing belts, so belts that increase strength, dexterity, or constitution. Be sure to cast the animal buffs that you don't have on your belt. Haste, of course, is always a useful spell for every single one of your characters. You definitely want to buff your pets with the common AB buffs, like let's say Heroism, for example, or Good Hope. Now just look at this screenshot. By just using these mostly simple buffs, we were able to increase our pet's armor class by almost plus 20 over its original value. Another very powerful buff that, that brown fur transmuters and alchemists can cast on pets is the level 6 spell called Transformation. Because pets do not have high base attack bonus, they only have medium. With Transformation, you can increase their attack bonus to high. <laughs> So now instead of just plus 15, they will end up with plus 20 base attack bonus. But like I said, because this is a personal spell by default, you will need certain classes to be able to cast it on your pets. Another very interesting buff that only alchemists can cast on pets is the spell Troop Strike. It is true that this spell only works for a single attack, but it's going to increase your pet's attack bonus by a massive plus 20, pretty much ensuring the attack will hit. A powerful offensive buff to have on not only on pets, but all your melee characters, is the divine spell called Crusader's Edge. This spell is simply graced against demons, who are the most common enemies you face in the game. Now of course, there are also other ways of increasing the power of your pets, but in this case, I'd say they are mostly generic buffs, such as Scald Rage or Bard Song, for example, or Domain Abilities, which I have already covered in my Attack Bonus Guide. Let me help. 
Last but not least, you can also actually polymorph your pet into different creatures by turning a wolf or dog into a leopard or even a dragon and also grant them an increasing physical attributes and armor class from the polymorph bonuses, which are different from enhancement and size bonuses. The ultimate polymorph spells are probably the dragon ones. The only issue I have with the dragon spells is that while they are powerful indeed, in pushing your pet's stats to even higher, the main problem with the dragon polymorph spells is that as you can see here, the dragons are quite big with very large and blocky models. This can be quite annoying in the many narrow and closed hallway areas you face in Wrath of the Righteous. So frankly, I wouldn't really transform them into dragons unless you are fighting in a very open area. Ok, so to finish this rather long video, let us talk about pet gear at last. Pets surprisingly can equip quite a lot of slots. The first one would be amulet. For amulet, I strongly recommend you pick the amulets that add an enhancement bonus on natural attacks, for example amulets of mighty fists. You will find quite a lot of these amulets throughout the game, mostly going from plus 1 to plus 4. You can also replace this effect by having a character like a druid or a hunter cast the spell Greater Magic Fang. The bell slot is pretty easy, usually you will want belts that enhance strength, dexterity or constitution, hopefully with effects that go beyond the animal buffs. Clutch of Corruption, for example, can increase constitution up to plus 8. For the hand slot, there's quite a lot of different gear that can go here. I suggest you pick the ones that increase the pet's natural attacks or critical hits. An easy way of getting gear for the pet hand slot is to talk with the skeleton merchant that starts appearing after chapter 2. Whenever you meet the skeleton merchant, be sure to ask them to get items from the hunter's arsenal. Whenever you meet them the next time, they will have items for your pets. Now the bracelet slot is also pretty self-explanatory. Ideally, you will want braces that increase your pet's armor class or have special effects. A good one, for example, are the braces of balance, which will increase your pet's trip difficulty class by plus 5. The cloak slot is also pretty self-explanatory. You will without a doubt want cloaks of resistance to increase our pet saving throws. Last but not least, pets also actually have a helmet slot, as surprising as that might be. For the helmet slot, I suggest you go with helms that increase armor class, such as this very special helm that will increase armor class by a morale bonus, a very unique one, but you can also go with other helmets that have unique effects. If you don't have any special helmets, then I suggest you go with the headbands that increase your mental stats to increase our pet saving throws. Well, so that was basically it. I know this video was quite long, but I do hope it helped you in learning how to properly build and buff your pets. I'll say it again, pets are, are extremely powerful in Wrath of the Righteous and certainly very useful to have around. I hope you appreciated this video and thank you for watching. As always, please remember to like and subscribe to the channel to help it grow. Thank you for watching and see you next time.